Hey everybody, today I want to show you how to solve a factoring table puzzle. This is an invention that I made a couple of years ago where uh, I give you a multiplication problem like this and uh, instead of giving you all the information, I have hidden various pieces of it. And the goal is simple, you need to find all of the missing pieces. So remember the outsides here multiply to give us the insides and then we combine like terms, right? Uh, and that's our final answer down here. So in order to solve these, there's a couple of important facts that I want you guys to be aware of. So first of all, as I mentioned, the outsides here multiply it to give us uh, something inside the table. So in this table puzzle, for instance, we'd be able to fill in this box right away because we know that x times 5x would have to go here. And so that would be what, 5x squared? So that's an important hint. Uh, sometimes that can be used in reverse. Uh, if I knew, for instance, that this was 8x, then x times something is 8x. I'd be able to deduce that this would have to be an 8. And so be careful with that one. You'll use that a lot. A couple other thoughts. Um, you can also, of course, add along the diagonals to get your answer. And so in this case, um, these two things are going to have to be x's and they have to add to 11 x's. And so I can use that in reverse to figure out that this box must have been an 8x. Another thought, you can uh, realize that if you have information in the same row or the same column, um, that they must have common factors. And so in this first problem, the fact that this top row has an x squared and a 12x, uh, they must have an x in common. So that circle must be an x. Likewise, in this column, a 12x and 24, they're both even. And so I could put a two in this circle on the outside. And then one other fact um, that is not so obvious, and that is that the diagonals in a puzzle have to multiply to the same thing. And so in this particular problem down here, this diagonal, x squared and 24, that's 24x squared if I multiply them, this diagonal has to be the same. So this has to be a 2x. 2x times 12x would give me the 24x squared. Now I'm guessing you don't believe me because that seems like kind of a strange property. And so I wanted to show you just in a regular multiplication table that you might have memorized back in third grade or something like that, um, right? Two times two is four and three times five is 15. If I pick any combination of say a two by two here, three times four, what's that equal? 12, 2 times 6, also 12. What if I uh, multiplied, say, uh, oops, um, what if I multiplied, say, this combination? Well, it's the same one, actually. Uh, here, 3 times 8 is 24, 6 times 4 is 24. Uh, if I go over here, 10 times 12 is 120, 8 times 15, not as obvious, but also 120. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be right next to each other. Suppose I looked at this combination, 6 times 10 is 60, 4 times 15 is 60. So if you have a true multiplication table on your hands, then that diagonal has to multiply to the same thing. All right, let's dive in and see how this works. Here in this puzzle, we've already seen that uh, this has two things in this top row, and therefore they have to have something in common. And in this case, that would be an x. They're each, uh, they each have at least an x in it. So that means I have to have an x in this outside circle. And remember, these two things have to multiply together to give me this item in the middle. And so this also has to be an x. Likewise, this x and this circle have to multiply to give me 12x. And so I can put a 12 in there. And 12 times something has to equal 24. And so um, this has to be a 2. And so even though I didn't know any of the outsides to begin with, with just this information, I was able to figure out all the outsides. And now it's just a normal multiplication. We can finish this by doing 2 times x in this box. That would be 2x. And then we can add along the diagonals to get our final answer. So this is the only thing in the x squared diagonal. So this can be an x squared. 
uh, these two x's have to add up to 14x. And this is the only thing in the numbers diagonal, so this has to be a plus 24. And so we're done. That was a relatively easy one, um, pretty much straightforward thinking. Uh, they can get a little trickier than that, so let's see uh, another example. Over here, uh, it's not quite so obvious where to start because we don't have a, a row or a column uh, to fill in. But I do know that the diagonals have to add together to give me the answer down here. And so uh, this is the only thing in what would normally be the x squared diagonal. And so this has to add up to 12x squared. It's got to be 12x squared. And so we could fill that in a moment, 12x squared. And this diagonal has to add up to 11x's. And so I've already got three of them. And so this must be 8x's. 8x's plus 3x's is 11x's. And I don't really know what this diagonal is yet, so I can't use that sort of thinking anymore. But now I've filled in a whole bunch of other stuff, so maybe there's other things we can do. For instance, um, I know 2 times something has to equal 8x. And so if I think in reverse, um, 2 times something, uh, 2 times 4 is 8, and I would need an x. So I think this has got to be a 4x. By the way, when you're filling these things out, um, I've set them up so that you should never have to make any guesses. You should always be able to figure out something and know it for certain based on one of those rules. So if you're ever tempted to say, eh, maybe this is a 3x or a 12x or a 2x or something, uh, don't put that in unless you're sure. Um, let's see here. Now that I know this is a 4x, and uh, that same sort of multiplication, something times 4x has to equal 12x squared. And so this has to be 3 times 4, and I need an x. 3x times 4x is 12x squared. And down here, these have to multiply to give me 3x. That's a little bit strange, but uh, 1 times something should give me that same thing again. So this must be a 1. 1 times 3x is 3x. And now that I've got um, the outsides here, I can multiply them together to get this final box. That must be a 2. And that means uh, the final diagonal has to add up to a 2. And we're finished. All right, this last one, uh, I'm going to give you freedom to pause it at any point. So if you want to pause it right now and just see how far you can go, that would be great. If you get stuck, watch for a little bit and I'll reveal something and then you could pause it and keep going. Um, or you can just watch the whole time. It's up to you. But uh, I would encourage you to try uh, as much of it as you can. All right. First thing I see is I got two things on the outside, which means I can multiply them together to get this box. So let me write that in a moment, 5x squared. And uh, that's about it for that line of thinking. Uh, but I do have quite a bit of the answer here, and I know that the diagonals have to add together to give me that. So let's go with that sort of thinking. Um, this is the number, 20. So I can write that in. These are going to be x's, probably, that add up to this, and I don't know anything there. This is the x squared diagonal, and so if that has to add up to 9x squared, then this has to be a 4x squared. And uh, this is the x cubed diagonal, and uh, this is the only thing in the x cubed, so this must be a 4x cubed. And that's given me quite a bit. Now I think I can reason out what the circle has to be because these have to multiply together. And so I need a 4 uh, to get the 4 in there. And I need an x squared because x squared times x gives me x cubed. And um, well, that would allow me to figure out what this is. Uh, like we saw in the last problem, this must be a 1 because 1 times 4 is 4x squared. And if that's a 1, 1 times 20 would give me 20. So this must be a 20 up here. 
And continuing with that multiplication sort of thinking, 20 times x, this box must be 20 x's. And uh, we could figure out that this is 1 times 5x, um, but some line of thinking that I haven't used yet, I just want to show you how um, if we didn't know that this was a 1, we could still figure out what this box is because of the diagonal trick. So if we looked at this diagonal, this diagonal multiplies, 5 times 20 is 100, x squared. And so this diagonal has to multiply to 100 x squared. And so 5 times 20 and x times x would make that happen. So this has to be a 5x because of that multiplication property. It would also work if we looked at this diagonal. This diagonal is 20x to the fourth. And so this diagonal has to multiply to 20x to the fourth. And the only way that can happen is if I have a 5 here, 5 times 4 is 20, and a single x, because x times x cubed is x to the fourth. So a couple different lines of reasoning, and they all say the same thing. This has to be a 5x. And now we're basically done. The final diagonal here adds up to 25x's, and so we can fill that in, and we're finished. So I hope you enjoy these table puzzles. Uh, I will say they will make your brain hurt because you're gonna have to think forwards, backwards. You're gonna have to do all sorts of different properties. It's good thinking. And so uh, let that encourage you. Um, don't give up on it. If you have questions, uh, by all means, let me know and I'll be glad to help. And I hope you have